Roper v. Simmons, the case that questioned capital punishments for minors and changed modern law forever. Christopher Simmons was quickly caught and put on trial for the murder. Because he had confessed to the murder and even performed a videotaped reenactment, and John Tesmer, the friend who had dropped out of the plot, had testified to his premeditation, Christopher Simmons was sentenced to death. However, he appealed because he thought that the council should have brought up the argument of his young age and therefore impulsiveness and also his troubled background as a reason as to why he was innocent and should not deserve the death punishment. Unfortunately, that appeal fell through and his death sentence held. In 2002, there was a case, the Atkins versus Virginia, which declared that mentally disabled people could not receive capital punishment. Simmons heard of this and he used that as a basis of, for another appeal saying that because he was a minder, minor, his brain was underdeveloped and therefore he counted as mentally disabled and could not be held fully accountable for his actions. Therefore, he did not deserve to be executed. This Missouri State Supreme Court took Simmons' plea and sentenced him only to life imprisonment instead of execution. However, because earlier the Supreme Court had ruled in the case Stanford versus Kentucky, that minors over 16 could be executed, the Missouri Supreme Court went against the ruling of the Supreme Court. So Simmons' case went on to the Supreme Court on the case as to question whether people under 18 could be executed. Here is a photograph of Christopher Simmons when he was arrested for the murder of Shirley Crook. The case took place on October 13, 2004. Simmons was the defendant and Roper was the prosecutor. The judges took into account the fact that minors are impulsive and not, therefore they are not fully mature. They do not have as much control over their actions as adults do, so their actions and their crimes that they commit should not be weighed as heavily as the actions of adults who are fully aware of what they are doing. In addition, the judges decided that there was an evolving standards of decency in America against the capital punishment for minors. People with mental disabilities used to be able to receive the capital punishment, but since then, America had reached a consensus that it was no longer okay. The same thing seemed to be happening with minors, because it used to be okay to execute minors over the age of 16. However, the evolving sense of decency in America had decided that any minor under the age of 18 could not receive the capital punishment. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of Simmons. He won the case on March 1, 2005, and the vote was 5-4. to four. The reason that they stated was because sentencing a minor to death is indeed a cruel and unusual punishment that goes against the Eighth Amendment, despite any previous crimes that the minor may have committed. This meant that the previous ruling in Stanford v. Kentucky that had ruled that minors over the age of 16 could be executed was overturned, and this was due to the evolving standards of decency. The nine justices in the case were Breyer, Ginsburg, Thomas, Kennedy, Scalia, Stevens, Souter, O'Connor, and Rehnquist. The majority opinion was written by Kennedy, and the dissenting opinion was written by O'Connor. A quote by Kennedy, who wrote the majority, was, When a juvenile offender commits a heinous crime, the state can exact forfeiture of some of the most basic liberties, but the state cannot extinguish his life and his potential to attain a mature understanding of his humanity.